second down. Here's Jackson. Got a man. It's caught for a Ravens touchdown. Devin Duvernay there to make the goal. Get together, guys. Let's get this thing moving. That's caught. It's Flowers. And all the way in for the Ravens touchdown. Zay Flowers with his first career NFL touchdown. And the Ravens are able to move back in front. So that's the rookie's first trip to the end zone, and I think it's safe to say one he'll always remember. Oh, without a doubt. That one is going to be imprinted forever. And nowadays, we're seeing rookies make a greater impact at that position at receiver than ever before. I think mainly because of the shot. This is third and goal. Now it's Jackson. To the right side, into the hands of Flowers. Touchdown! Zay Flowers with two touchdowns on the season, both in this game. And the Ravens add on to their lead, and it's looking like that win streak is going to extend another week. So definitely a good day's work throwing the football. Very good day's work. A fourth touchdown pass as they're really pouring it on. Yeah, and so much for going into Justin clock Parker, mode after getting that touchdown, right? Because you would think with the right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. On second down, this is Harris. And he's in. Touchdown, Steelers. Najee Harris. His seventh rushing touchdown of the year. And the Steelers are on the board first on the road here in L.A. Now this is a crew. They've come out flat their last two games, both losses. But just judging by the energy level, they look different here early, and that touchdown shows how. Yeah, it seems to me that that touchdown gets them off the treadmill. Because, you know, you, you've been on the treadmill. I've seen you work out. You go forever <laughs> and ever, and it tells you you've gone somewhere. But you really have. You're in the same spot. They've exchanged it for an escalator still got some hills to climb but they can get there these are good analogies i run outside sometimes though you know get, get some fresh air a little sun on your face a little, a little wind in there yeah that's right and ten they run the play fake here's pickett look in the middle of the field and he's got a man complete down to the ten and into the end zone touchdown pittsburgh Allen Robinson, his second touchdown on the season. And the Steelers are able to widen their advantage. Well, Charles, he's still a young signal caller in this league, second year in the NFL. I don't know if last year as a rookie if he would have worked through his progressions like he did on that touchdown pass. I think you're right about that. We're seeing him grow up right in front of our eyes because when he went to his primary read, he recognized that they were all over that, so he continued to survey the field, picked up another target, delivered a pass exactly where it needed to be. A very mature play for the second-year quarterback. To a short game. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. And he's able to get most of what he needed on the carry there. Seven yards on the gain, and it's third and two now. Levis. And this is caught. He's got it. Touchdown, L.A. Van Jefferson from three yards out. And the Rams get a bit closer. Well, with this rookie QB, we talk a lot about his ball placement and how good he can be at laying it right in there. I think we just saw, Charles, though, the strength of that arm. That was an absolute rifle for the completed touchdown. It absolutely was, and let's face it, you think he was really ready to get that first touchdown? Absolutely. He threw that pass with authority, just as you described. Big-time arm right there. He'll try again. And this time, he is in. Touchdown, Steelers. Well, nothing fancy there, Charles. You had three tight ends on the field. They were going to run the football. The defense knew it, but the defense couldn't stop them. And I haven't met an offensive line yet that doesn't get more satisfaction out of running the football into the end zone than pass protecting. They had determination on their side, and they got it done. Pick it'll look to throw it here. Got his man, it's caught for a Steelers touchdown. Miles Boykin 
from eight yards out. And the Steelers have moved out in front by three touchdowns. A nice throw there by the second-year quarterback. And I don't believe that was the kind of play he would have made as a rookie because usually your rookie season is in a continuation of your college days. A lot of one read, and if you don't have it, you just take off and go. Now he's settled in the pocket a little bit more, reading the field and getting to a second and sometimes third progression. That was a nice play. From the gun, it's a run by Evans. And he's going to take this one in for a Rams touchdown. Zach Evans with his first career NFL touchdown. And the Rams are able to cut into that deficit. Levis will try to throw for the two. He's got it. So they convert the two. That keeps their slim hopes alive as we're back to a two-score game. Hooker on first down. Escaping the pressure right. Godwin's got it. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. A great effort there with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Buccaneers get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. One of the keys to their long winning streak has been scoring first. An ideal drive right there, getting the first six points of the ball game. Do you go back to our meeting with the offensive coordinator? Oh, yeah. what he told us? Absolutely. With some teams, I script to probe in the early part of the game. Other teams, I script to attack. They've been in attack mode for these ball games and continue that in this one. It's only been a terrific career to this point. Godwin's got it. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. And the Buccaneers are able to add on to that lead. In the second quarter, and already his second touchdown reception. Absolutely the definition of a difference maker here in this first half. Certainly one of his quarterback's favorite targets in this game. And I figure he's going to draw a little more attention and coverage moving forward. He said he's carrying right now. If you're, if you're pushing a thousand yard pace as a receiver, that means he won't. And that's caught inside the 30. Down the numbers. There he goes. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. George Pickens, his first touchdown of the year. And the Bucs will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. Boy, Charles, this offense is just so explosive. They lead the league in scoring. And another example of just how good they are right there on that play. Yeah, we often overstate about how explosive teams are, but this team is truly a threat to score on every snap, especially on the first few plays of any series. And a big strike like that, that only adds to their reputation as the league's best offense. And that'll be incomplete with just six seconds left on the clock. How about the coverage we just saw break out on third down? Dime defense, blanket in the field with extra defensive backs and speed, unable to find an open hole to complete that pass. So look at this. Here's the field goal unit coming out. And he is going to need to bomb this one. They spot it on the midfield stripe. So it is a 60-yard attempt here. Kuhn knocks this one through the post. Charles, even as long field goals become more and more common, this is still a very rarefied air. Only just over 20 field goals have been kicked from 60 yards or further. And you can add his Booker. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And the Falcons grab it. Look at this. Middle of the field. A breakaway. And this is going to be brought back. It's a scoop and score for the Falcon TD. This defense, Charles, they needed some type of a spark to help get them back in this game. I think they just got their spark. No doubt about it. You know, that's all they discussed. How can we get ourselves moving again? How can we get our team going? This definitely qualifies.
is to throw that timing off. Patterson is in the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. Well, this offensive line has really stepped up to the challenge here because those mastodons, they've been sensational clearing holes all game long. And this is great work down here near the goal line to give their back the space he needs to work his way into the end zone. Again, it's Hooker looking to throw. Touchdown! Chris Godwin from three yards out. And the Bucs take a three-touchdown lead. So whatever happened to rookie quarterbacks took the time to adjust to life in the NFL because this guy looks like he's been doing it for about, what, seven years? Four touchdown passes? That's not something rookies are supposed to be doing with the ease in which he's doing it. From the shotgun, here's Bennett. And he holds it in for the Buccaneer touchdown. Trey Palmer with his first career NFL touchdown. And the Bucs get another third quarter touchdown to add on to that lead. So another touchdown there. And even though we're still just here in the third quarter, kind of hard now to see them giving up this lead. And this is just an offense that's imposing its will right now. You name it, they're able to do it. If you're the play caller, whatever you want to see. Yeah. But we certainly know the coach isn't happy along the sideline. He and he gets in. Touchdown, Atlanta. B. John Robinson. His first rushing touchdown on the year. And the Falcons get a small measure of revenge as they cut into this fourth quarter deficit. But just power football there down near the goal line. Give it to him. He's able to push his way across. Yeah, they went heavy. Robinson again. And he is into the end zone for a Falcon touchdown. B. John Robinson with now two fourth quarter touchdowns. And the Falcons have got it back to a two score game here in the fourth. So a little bit of a letdown there defensively. I mean, look, you're still two scores to the good CD, but things may be a little more uncomfortable than they had hoped. Yeah, if you kept them out of the end zone there, this game's over. You've locked the door on them. Instead, it's still open a little bit, and they've got a puncher's chance. The Falcons are going to leave the offense out there. They'll go for two. They'll look to throw. And he's got it for the two-point conversion. So they tack on a pair more here to narrow that deficit a bit further. And, of course, on the two-point try, had the option to run or pass. They pass it there, and it works. Felt pretty straightforward, didn't it? An open receiver. Ball's put on it. Second down throw coming from Bennett. And he's got it. Caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Jalen Hyatt, a 24-yard touchdown. And the Bucs add on to their lead, and it's looking like that win streak is going to extend another week. He's got them out now to a three-score lead here in the fourth quarter after that one, CD. And, well, he looked right off the line like he knew that that ball was coming his way, and he secured it for six points. Yeah, I think when you're leading by a healthy margin already, it actually loosens you up and allows you to quarterback. If someone shows, go get him, and that's exactly what they did. And he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. Joshua Dobbs, his second touchdown on the season. And the Vikings have taken the early lead on the road here at Lambeau. An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach. Dobbs. Flushed out right. And it's caught in the end zone for the Viking touchdown by Justin Jefferson. Four yards on the touchdown grab. And they are able to add on to their advantage. He was able to move around and found some vision to throw the football. And how about how he ended it? Boy, he had some zip on that throw. Yeah, it doesn't hurt to have an arm like that. Results in the touchdown here. Great play offensively. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. And he will get this into the end zone. Touchdown, Green Bay. A.J. Dillon, his 
his third rushing touchdown of the year. And the Packers have come back to make it a two-point game. I wonder if he changed anything on his play sheet or they just executed better. Because they had two previous drives that ended in field goals. Before this one, they finally were able to put into the end zone. Well, whatever he did, speaking of the offensive coordinator, might be using that formula going forward. It worked. Regional speech, who knows? But it looks like they're ready to go. Now this one complete downfield on the left side. Now he's loose down the left sideline. Touchdown, Vikings! Justin Jefferson with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Vikings come right out of the locker room and score here in the opening minute of the third quarter. In order to lead in a game, you're going to get plenty of contributors, but that's his second touchdown catch of this game. He's one of the key guys in this one. And you better believe he'll be looking for the hat trick here as this one continues to go. The offensive line, often known as the nasty side. The left side, usually the technical side. Kind of reminds me of the old Atlanta Falcons 2009-2010. He's got Watson. It's caught. Touchdown, Packers. A great effort there. His first touchdown on the year. And the Packers have cut the lead back down to two. And partner, they found a gap there on the post pattern, and it was in the middle third of the field. And that's really difficult to do because ordinarily the safeties are back there to prevent that happening. But they found the opening and exploited it. Matt LaFleur, he tells the offense, stay out there, go for two. Love throwing for it. Goes right side. And he's got it. So they run ahead and went for two to tie the game and it works out. So they go with a pass there on the two-point try and able to convert the charts. And a good job by the offense figuring out. Off the play fake. Prescott. sit through the open week but a good start here and just think about everyone around them everyone around the organization when you lose headed into that open week everyone's cringing because you don't have a chance to get on the horse and ride it again for at least two weeks well they were able to take that time use it constructively and now they're back in form touchdown reception and the Rams decision to go for it pays off with six points a nice throw there by the second year quarterback and I don't believe that was the kind of play he would have made as a rookie because usually your rookie season is a continuation of your college days a lot of one read and if you don't have it you just take off position and make plays just like that one we saw there Take it into the end zone for a counter touchdown. Tony Pollard, his third rushing touchdown of the year. And the Cowboys have taken the lead. Well, they were looking to pick up the first down on third and short. They got a little more than they bargained for, finding the end zone as well. And oftentimes in short yardage situations, you get a lot of defenders stacked near the line of scrimmage partners. So if you can get past that first wave, there's usually room to roam, and he found it. Prescott to throw it. And this is caught for a Cowboy touchdown. Two first half touchdown passes now for Dak Prescott. And they're able to add on to their advantage. He got a figure down by the goal line. This is where a tight end earns his money in the high traffic area. And he's able to work free in the middle of the end zone and grabs that one for a touchdown.
they come up on first and ten. Touchdown, Cowboys! Three touchdown passes now for Dak Prescott. And the Cowboys are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. And on this play, he just made a great route. The quarterback had to deliver it, sure, but a great route run there. And Brandon, this is what the best receivers do. They work on their route running. Because it's one thing to have athletic ability, but to really get open, you have to set up defensive backs with different routes and be precise in your cuts. It's a field goal attempt. Prescott on third and goal. And that is caught. Touchdown, Cowboys. Dak Prescott now four touchdown passes on the afternoon. And the Cowboys will extend their lead here just before halftime. No surprise there. Third and goal down here. That's where they're going to look for their tight end. Yeah, you want that big guy running his routes because it doesn't matter who they cover him with. If it's another big guy, he might use his bulk against him. If it's a shorter defender, might go over the top. Either way, you tend to find a little bit of a mismatch in that area. On that throw. Now Prescott on fourth down. And this is caught for a Cowboy touchdown. Brandon Cooks with his second touchdown of the game, fourth of the year. And the Cowboys take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. First down, Prescott. Pass to Tony Pollard out of the backfield. Touchdown! Tony Pollard. He scored on the ground and through the air. And the Cowboys extend their lead yet again. Well, forget about the weapons out wide. He knows he's got another weapon in the backfield of the passing game, Charles, and he utilized him perfectly on that play. And the offense coordinator showed me something on that play, Brandon, because so often during a game, our cameras find them looking down at their play sheets, and you wonder if they're absorbing anything. He had something specific in mind, and he went to it, and it worked well. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Robinson hauling it in outright. Touchdown, L.A. Wondale Robinson, his first touchdown on the year. And the Rams are able to eat in just a bit to this sizable deficit. And on that one, able to catch it, also able to have the wherewithal to take it in for the score. And how about the phases of a successful catch and a completion of a play? Look the ball in, secure. Older than you, as you well know, partner, and you tend to tell me that all the time, but uh, this used to be a big-time song in the lyric. He's got a man complete, and he's caught. Touchdown, Cowboys. C.D. Lamb, 44 yards. And the Cowboys get another third-quarter touchdown to add on to that lead. Boy, another score. This lead gets even bigger. And, Charles, we haven't even hit the fourth quarter yet. Well, forget the deficit, right? They're really not going to cut into that a heck of a lot. But how can they get out of here with some dignity? Can they get a stop or two? Can they make a play on offense themselves? Anything to start to feel better about what's happened to them here in this one. Prescott to throw it. And this ball is caught by Lamb. Touchdown, Dallas. A great effort there. With now his second touchdown of this third quarter. And the Cowboys take advantage of the field position on the turnover to cash in for six. Prescott from the gun. And this ball is caught by Lamb. Touchdown, Dallas. Great play there. A dynamo since the break. Three third quarter touchdowns. And the Cowboys just continue to roll.
And we remember, of course, all scoring plays need to be verified upstairs. And I think they're going to at least take a look at this. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds. And obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. After review of the play, ruling on the field. Stands. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video. Carey puts him over the 100-yard mark. And this is caught. He's got a touchdown, L.A. Van Jefferson from a yard out. And the Rams get a small measure of revenge as they cut into this fourth quarter deficit. Now, there was no going through the Prescott. And this ball is caught by Wayne. Touchdown, Dallas. A 20 yard touchdown. And the Cowboys look like they're going to get back in the win column as they extend their lead here in this fourth quarter. So still throwing here in the fourth quarter with a pretty sizable lead, and now that lead even more sizable. And if nothing else here, CD, a chance to pile on some stats before this one wraps up, and he did just that. Brandon Convention tells us it's time for them to get off the gas a little bit, right? But you and I both know the receivers don't want them to because, as you noted, this is their chance to pile on the stats. If they got their way, they try to get every single spot in the depth chart points before this game is over. Now Prescott. And this is caught for a Cowboy touchdown. Jake Ferguson, a beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And the Cowboys continue to run up the score. They lead it big here in the fourth. And, Charles, they continue to have trouble stopping him as he's into the end zone yet again. Yeah, that's multiple series now that have ended with him in the end zone. A perfect plan on how to utilize him best when they get in close. The bye week coming right where they want it in the middle of the schedule. He's got a man complete. Down the left sideline. And it's a Titans touchdown. Traylon Burks, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Titans have answered that early field goal to take a first quarter lead. Boy, just zero hesitation from the rookie passer there, Carter. He is coming out firing in this opening quarter. And all the talk leading into this game was that pass rush talking about challenging this guy, getting into his grill, getting into his space. And how about him? Might be his first year in the NFL, but I don't see any fear in him at all. How about that big-time throw right out of the gate? Thompson man, Bradley Pinion to punt this one away. This is taken at the 18. And now off to the races, down the right side. Touchdown, Titans! Titans are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. And we always talk about kick returns being so exciting on kickoffs. Punt return almost equally exciting. And typically we talk about the kickoff return being the most exciting 10 seconds in football. Let's just cut it in half for a punt return and make it the most exciting 5 seconds in football. It's a great, glamorous, dashing play. and kept him contained when he pulled the ball down. I think he was fortunate to get what he did on that. That ball is caught. It's London for the Atlanta touchdown. A great effort there. His first touchdown on the year. And the Falcons have cut it back within a score. An out route there for the score, a quick out route there for the score. Yeah, you're not really surveying the defense on this one. You're just counting on timing, making this play happen. One, two, balls out of his hand. Third and 12. Levis to throw once more. And it's caught on the deflection. And this is going to be a touchdown. They went five wide in that offensive set. And racing going three wide is a big deal. To go five, how about the way that they finish that?
things off. Did you just fit a race car reference into the game? Zoom, zoom. How about the way that you play? When you go five wide, that means you're going fast now. Zoom, zoom indeed. First and ten. Here's Levis. Totally question it no more. This rookie, big time throw right there. Great poise, stepped up, trusted he could lay it in there perfectly, and he knew that his guy was going to make the catch on the other end. Nice collaboration. Post Charles will see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talked to says the exact same thing when you start a drive from that deep in your own territory. The goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt the touchdown, Titans! Son of a night. He scored a punt return and now he scored through the air. And the Titans continue to pull away here in this first half. Well, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but his top two options were not available on that throw, so he went the safe route and worked out pretty well. It was like you were in the pocket. How about you going through the progressions like that? But a lot of offenses say, touchdown to check down. Look downfield first, bring it back to the line of scrimmage. Not easy for a rookie to do. Oftentimes, they get one look, and they make their decision off of that. He went through three. That was impressive. Now Levis. Over the middle and into the hands of his receiver. Touchdown. Chris Moore from 21 yards away. And the Titans take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. So whatever happened to rookie quarterbacks taking time to adjust to life in the NFL? Because this guy looks like he's been doing it for about, what, seven years? Four touchdown passes? That's not something rookies are supposed to be doing with the ease in which he's doing it. Ten, because they've had some time. They'll start the drive with Hill. Spit taking it right down Broadway. Now look out. He's to the 20. Touchdown, Falcons. Justice Hill, his first rushing touchdown of the year. And the Falcons are able to make some inroads here to that deficit. Well, if they're going to make a game of this in the second half, they need a few big plays to go their way. That's one. And the way to get it done is to also conserve time. So to your point, that big play right there, now you're not moving the ball downfield, taking time off the clock. You're leaving yourself a better avenue to continue to try and make a comeback. These. So this is going to require some heavy thinking on the sideline to figure out what they can do to crack this defense. This is fielded at the 27. And he's loose again. And he's going to score. It's a Titans touchdown. He returns that punt 73 yards. As his guys have opened up a very comfortable lead. A lot of times they want this guy just to try to flip field position. He flipped it all the way into the end zone. Yeah, the rule of thumb is can you pick up 10 yards? That's getting a first down. Instead, he takes it all the way and provides a big spark for his team. Nowadays, they're really wide receiver. This to Pitts, and he's got him. Touchdown, Atlanta. A three-yard touchdown pass, and the Falcons get a bit closer. Well, that's just how they drew it up, CD. His first read was there, got it to him quickly, and into the end zone. Absolutely excellent execution. Again, it's Heineke. And that is 
is caught. Touchdown, Falcons. Mac Hollins, a nine-yard touchdown grab. And the Falcons have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. So a little bit of a letdown there defensively. I mean, look, you're still two scores to the good, CD, but things may be a little more uncomfortable than they had hoped. Yeah, if you'd kept them out of the end zone there, this game's over. You've locked the door on them. Instead, it's still open a little bit, and they've got a puncher's chance. Second down, Heineke. This is caught. Touchdown, Falcons. Kyle Pitts, a beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And the Falcons have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? You know, one by land, two by sea. He didn't mention air because right now we're seeing a big-time performance, aren't we? That's two touchdowns so far in this game. Where'd you pull that one from? And, you know, every now and then I actually listened in history class. <laughs> and you're just a scholar all the way around. You're reading all the time. I like that you fit that into the broadcast. <laughs> you know, I just grab a nug head. He's back to throw. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he gets in just in the nick of time, so they get the touchdown they need. Now they need a two-point conversion to tie it. We'll break down the touchdown later. It's two-point conversion time. Go to your script, pick your play, and go for it. into this game, don't you? You certainly do, and when you have a team that doesn't get too full of itself, even though they've won two games in a row, you get the end result that we saw there, that nice opening drive, because it's tough to create a lot of room to operate. The field's pretty condensed, but that was really well designed there, and they're able to pick up a first down. They run with a rookie from K-State, Deuce Vaughn, and he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. Deuce Vaughn, his second rushing touchdown on the year. And the Buccaneers are able to match the opening drive touchdown against him with one of their own. And there's an offense that didn't panic after getting down early, and with good reason. No better way to silence a home crowd than with a nice, long, sustained drive. And they were able to put one together here and finish with the touchdown run. Even open and hurtling through him. Buccaneers touchdown. Darnell Washington, a seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Bucs have taken the lead. We're still in the first quarter, but it's apparent they're going to have to come up with a different defensive game plan for him because right now he's kind of having his way against that defense and has added a touchdown to the list. How do you slow him down? They're going to have to mix up some coverages, maybe change who's guarding him. run and play action, maybe throwing it. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. Damian Harris taking it in for two yards out. And the Bills are an extra point away from evening this one up. And they would not be denied on the ground, powering it in just one play after they got stopped short. And how about how many tight ends are on the field? Because in today's NFL, we think of the tight end more as a pass. They go back to the ground now with Fournette. And he's in the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Leonard Fournette, his first touchdown on the year. And the Bucs are going to take the lead. A strong, determined run there, Charles, to get in for six points. This is why it's such a team game, isn't it? And I know that sounds really generic and it sounds almost trite, but the blocks were made up front, offensive line, collective victory at the line of scrimmage and downfield. And how about the finish to the run all the way into the end zone?
for two, maybe even three more plays. And he's got his tight end Knox for Bills touchdown. A great effort there. There to make the grab. And the Bills are within an extra point of tying up this ball game. These two teams in this first half, it's been fun. Back and forth, back and forth. Well, it's not fun for the defensive coordinators, <laughs> but offensive coordinators are enjoying it. Yeah, they're having streaks here, aren't they? Being able to put scores together and, and really bunch. I think you want to avoid playing scared, you know, and put it into the mind of the quarterback that you've got. And now off to the races, down the right side. He may go. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Leonard Fournette. With two touchdowns on the season, both in this game. And the Bucs are able to move back in front. Boy, Charles, this offense is just so explosive. They lead the league in scoring. And another example of just how good they are right there on that play. Yeah, we often overstate about how explosive teams are. But this team is truly a threat to score on every snap especially on the first few plays of any series. And a big strike like that, that only adds to their reputation as the league's best offense. Pitch this ball in. Now Allen. Touchdown, Bills! Dawson Knox, a beast of the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And the Bills are back with a score. That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there's an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard, you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency of anything. One final try here for Allen. And that is caught. Touchdown, Buffalo. Gabriel Davis, 29 yards. And the Bills have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. Well, they needed three scores to have any chance. There's the first of the three as they get into the end zone. Yeah, Brandon, I think that our guys at Next Gen Stats in charge of the win probability. They have all three timeouts and the two-minute warning, but they need two scores. And that's caught inside the 30. And all the way home for a Bills touchdown. Damian Harris, he scored on the ground and through the air. And the Bills have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. No, we're not cheering. No, we're not rooting. But I am excited about this, and I know you are too. We got a ball game again after that big-time strike. Big-time strike, and you are right. Don't go anywhere yet. This thing's not done. Those are the ones the offensive coordinators dream about. One play drives from that distance. What an effort. It results in the touchdown. Now a crease here as he's past the 30. He might take this all the way. He will take this all the way. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. A big-time special teams play here in the fourth quarter to extend their lead. And coaches preach it all the time. If you can score on special teams, your chances of winning the game really jump up in a big way. Now, I'll let our analytics friends quantify it and give us the exact numbers, but that's what coaches talk about all the time, that extra momentum, that extra bounce you get from a special team score. I don't have any analytics friends. Those are your <laughs> friends. <laughs> I'll claim them. Oh. As they take it with eight ticks remaining. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is into the end zone for the touchdown. So they still need a miracle with a clock where it's at, but they get one piece.